Now notice the, let's look at flaccid first. Now flaccid is what? A lower motor neuron lesion. How do lower motor neuron lesions present? At the level and ipsilateral, we know that. So now if you tap my biceps tendon and there's no reflex or very low, very minimal, you have hypo decreased or no reflexes. That's a classic sign of a lower motor neuron lesion, a reflexy, hyperreflexy. And because of the lack of contraction, the other classic lower motor neuron sign is loss of muscle tone. So there's a tonia or hypotonia. So those two are the most classic signs of lower motor neuron lesion. There is a third one you need to remember called fasciculations. And this is unexplained, but these are random twitchings of the muscle while the muscle is said to be dying. So you remember this biceps is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. So if I cut the musculocutaneous nerve, the biceps is said to be dying. And so notice then for a period of three, four, five weeks, this muscle would just start quivering. You get these very visible, again, they're called fasciculations. The physician can see them and the patient feels them. So you know that they are there. And they begin to die out after about five or six weeks and they're not long-term. And then of course, by the fact you're not contracting the muscle fibers, you get severe atrophy. So that's another characteristic. Now compare that <clears throat> to spasticity. What is this? Upper motor neuron lesion. And what are upper motor neuron lesions? You know the rules now, you can say it in your sleep. The lesion is below, the deficit is below the lesion and it's either ipsy or contra. And what determines ipsy versus contra? Is it above or below decusation? That's very simple. So notice if you tested my biceps tendon instead of a single jerk, which is normal, now you get repeated reflex firing, you get spasticity, spasticity. And so you get hyperreflexia. So that's one of the classic markers of an upper motor neuron is the increased activity. Now there are reasons for these, but we don't have time to go into them here. We'd have to do that in a longer program. So hyperreflexia, notice you're gonna have increased tone, just the opposite of a lower motor neuron. And there are two reflex changes that are important in neurology for upper motor neurons. And most important one is Babinski. This is classic. Now Babinski is a testing of cutaneous reflexes on the sole of the foot. Individually with normally wired cortical spinal tract to the lower limb, if you stroke the sole of the foot, the toes flex. But now if you have a cortical spinal tract lesion and you stroke the sole of the foot, notice they extend and especially the, the, big, the big toe extends dramatically. So the big toe will extend upward along with the other digits. So again, it's also called the extensor reflex as well as Babinski. So this is part of it as well, extensor or Babinski sign. And the other one uh, won't go into it much, but it's another classic one, class knife reflex. Now remember the most common upper motor neuron lesion is a stroke, capsular stroke. And you remember how the patient appears after the stroke. Notice the upper limb is in tight flexion. This is chronic spasticity. So all of these muscles are in chronic spastic firing. So you have strong flexion of the digit, strong flexion of the wrist, you have flexion of the elbow. So you have this chronic spasticity going on. Now notice you can take that forearm and pull on it a little bit. It doesn't take a lot of pull on it. You can pull on it and collapse the spasticity and the limb will straighten out. Then you turn loose, it goes back to spastic. 
It's like pulling a knife handle, a knife blade out of a knife handle and putting it back in. And that's where neurology got the term class uh, knife. That's where the term comes from. So again, so spasticity is hyperreflexy or hypertonia. And of course, the opposite for flaccid lower motor neurons. Okay, so that's kind of the clinical picture.